Hello, everyone. Welcome to the final webinar of WSO2 Integration Studio 2019 series. I'm Dakshika Jayatilaka, technical leader at WSO2, and here with I have Sachin Ransinger, who is a software engineer at WSO2 Enterprise Integrated Team. So let's have a look what's on today's agenda. So first we'll explain the give the instruction about this and we'll show how to install the VS Code extension for WS2 EI. Then we'll explain some of the uh, features, useful features for effective development. Then we'll quickly run through the uh, demo part. Finally, we'll explain the roadmap features, upcoming features with the VS Code extension. So let's get start with the visual code so why we choose the visual studio code extension or and same time why we choose the visual studio for this development so basically uh, probably you may have already known about this vs code or this is the first time that you are get to know about it so vs code is a free and open source uh, code editor and it's a multi-platform supported code editor which is developed by the Microsoft. So according to the Stack Overflow Developer Survey 2019, so this is the most popular code editor across the developers. Even they uh, got the same ranking in 2018 as well. So this includes uh, sub its support for the debugging and it has the embedded Git control support and the GitHub support. Uh, and the same time syntax highlighting, intelligent code completion, snippets, code refactoring, and many more features. So if you haven't downloaded Visual Studio Code, uh, as you can see, you can go to the code.visualstudio.com download page, and you can see they have much uh, uh, different OS flavors and supported uh, options. You can download the Windows, uh, Dev, RPM, and the Mac's ver Mac version as well. So if you followed any previous webinar in this series, you may already know about our latest WS2 Integration Studio, which is the more improved version of the integration tooling. At the same time, those who don't like to switch to switch their gears into the current, uh, their, from the current favorite editor, this may be a good option that they can try out. So as you can see in the screenshot, if you visit to the Visual Studio Code Marketplace, and if you search WS2 Enterprise Integrated there, you can see something like this, which includes the all the relevant information, description, and the requirements, etc. Uh, all the uh, feature explanations and code options will be showing in this marketplace page. At the same time, so before you getting started with this extension, you need to fulfill some prerequisites. So. First prerequisite you may need is you need to uh, you need to have uh, Oracle JDK 8 or later version. Even JR is also fine with this, and you have to pre-install and set path in your machine. At the same time, you need to have Maven 3.30 or later version. And uh, to uh, when you are doing the installation, so we have three main options which provides by the VS Code, and you can install extension if you click on the activity bar, and if you go down with the uh, bottom of the icon, and if you click on the extensions, uh, you can you can get something similar view like this, and you can search WSO2 Enterprise Integrator there, and you can see the same information which available at the Marketplace page. So second option, as I explained previously, you can use the uh, Visual Studio Marketplace website, and you can search from uh, there, and you can click on the install option. It will automatically open up the existing Visual uh, Studio, and uh, it will uh, show this information as well. And finally, you have the option of install that manually. If you are more familiar with, uh, familiar user with the VS Code, you may love to use the command palette to install the extensions. In that case, depending on your operating system, you can uh, you can open the command palette by 
if you're in a Mac, Command Shift P, or if you're in the Linux or other machine, Control Shift P. Open the command palette, type the install from the VSIX, and you can browse, you can download the uh, file, you can locate it and uh, do the installation. And after you install it, you need to reload the VS Code. So I'll give the, uh, uh, I'll ask uh, Sajini to continue the uh, webinar from here onwards. Thank you. Thank you, Dakshika. So the nice part of this whole thing is that uh, this extension provides a greater developer experience. So from the beginning, our main intention was to deliver a tooling platform which makes your life super easy and productive during the time of integration development with WSO2 Enterprise Integrator. So I will tell you some of the features the extension has for the integrator integration editing. Uh, so the extension gives all the suggestions and auto completions and most importantly it provides code snippets based completion also you have code diagnostics hover support and apart from that the extension also has syntax highlighting auto uh, closing text and automatic node indentations abilities as well so now i'll briefly explain some of the features i have just mentioned here so the first thing is IntelliSense, also called as context-aware code completions. So this is a very important feature because when you are developing uh, Synapse configurations, the extension will help you with all the suggestions and auto-completions. So <clears throat> then the code diagnostic feature. So this is also a very important feature because uh, usually it is very likely to make errors when developing configurations. So with that, Feature. So with this feature, the extension will warn you about the erroneous code in your configuration and the reason for the error and what you can do to correct the error. They all the all the information now in the diagnostic message. So that's about the code diagnostics. Uh, so if we talk about the Gordy definition uh, in the context of our uh, VS Code extension. Uh, the goal definition feature will help you uh, when you are developing configurations that includes mediators such as sequence endpoints where you actually implement the definition in a separate artifact file and refer them from another file so if you want to navigate to a particular definition you may find how useful this feature is during the development time and about uh, and if I talk about the hover support, hover over support, uh, so uh, you can use this hover support uh, just to get an idea about the elements that we have used in our Synapse configuration file. So as you can see in this picture, it gives you a nice description, a small uh, description about the element that you have just hovered over. Okay, uh, so uh, let's talk about the command driven approach that we have in our extension tool extension so let's see what this means so when it comes to vs code actually it has all these nice built-in features just to increase your product productivity while uh, development uh, so we have also used some of these features just to make sure that your time is spent productive productively during the integration development with WSO2 Enterprise Integrator. So the command-driven approach is one of the examples for this. We have exposed all the extension capabilities via commands through, uh, through the command uh, VS Code command palette. Uh, so with that, uh, we make sure that you have a smooth and great development experience with our extension. So here we have listed down some of the useful commands in our extension. So in the first, uh, you can actually use this activate uh, WSO2 EI tooling command to activate the extension. And to create a project, we have a create new ESP project command. Also to create different artifacts, we have a set of uh, create a new artifact ex uh, commands uh, in our extension. Apart from that, uh, to create a deployable archive, you can use this build project command. And also to change this language mode to Synapse XML, uh, you can use this change language to Synapse XML command. 
So, uh, so now it's time to do the demo. So let's begin with the clean start. Uh, so I'm going to open my VS, uh, Visual Studio Code and I have opened it in here. Uh, so as of now, I have zero extension installed. If you just check uh, in this uh, by uh, clicking this extension icon in the activity bar, you may find, find that there is no extension installed uh, right now. So let's open Synapse configuration file and see what we can do with that file. So for that, I have uh, actually uh, prepared a small configuration. Let me open it. So it is in here. Uh, so as you can see, this is just a XML file. So if you just, uh, if I just try to do any of the editing, like if I just go and type, uh, uh, if I just go and add, uh, try to add a mediator here, like a uh, payload mediator, it won't give any suggestions for this, right? So also, if I just mess up with some of the uh, Synapse configurations here, it won't give any uh, diagnostic messages as well. Right. So, uh, so if you uh, see back down here, it says that uh, the language mode is XML. So, so as you can see, I can't do any, I can't do anything with uh, this uh, XML without having any extensions. So let me actually uh, show you how to install the VS Code extension that we have for WS2 Enterprise Integrator. So as Dakshita said. Uh, we have three uh, ways of installing the extension. First, uh, the first I'll show you how to uh, create it uh, using uh, the mark, uh, how to install it using the marketplace. So if you just uh, browse to, if you just go to VS Code marketplace uh, site, you can just browse uh, the browser extension from here. So I'm going to put uh, WSO2 Enterprise Integrator. Um, and, I wish, and I, if I just hit enter, you can see our extension down here. So as you can see here, so there uh, we, you can see a, a nice description about the extension and what are the categories, the tags, and also the uh, also about the GitHub repo. And what you have to do is. You can just click this install button and it will just automatically install to our VS Code, uh, VS Code instance, right? So that is one way. So the, uh, the other way is if we just go back to the extension icon, uh, which, is at, which is at the activity bar. So if I just click here, you can just browse our extension uh, in this uh, text box as well. So as you see here, so this is our extension. So in here, it says that the WSO is the developer of this extension. And if you have a quick look at the details, it has this descri small descri description about the instance uh, VS Code extension. And also uh, it says what are the pre requirements of this uh extension and it gives a quick uh it, it gives an introduction to quick start as well so you can easily get started with a uh, extension and also it has listed down uh, all the useful commands that you will that you will be using uh, during the ex uh, during the development time with our extension right uh, so down here we have uh, shown uh, some of the GIFs so that you can understand what are the what are the features that we have enabled and how these how these features works uh, how these features work right uh, so to install you can actually uh, click this install button and install the extension to your VS Code editor so that is another way. So let me show the last way, which is we, which is we can actually install the v6 file, uh, install the v6 files to uh, of the extension. Um, so if you actually want to do any changes uh, to the extension, you can do it by uh, cloning our repo. 
uh, which will be shown in our uh, later slide and do whatever the changes that you have and follow the instruction and create the v6 file and once you have your own v6 file you can just click uh, again the extension icon here and here you have this more option, more action icon uh, so from here you can actually select this install from v6 option and with that you have to have uh, uh, select your v6 file from here so i have my v6 file in my desktop so i'm just going to uh, uh, select it and install from this v6 file so with that uh, i get this information message saying completed installing the extension so as dakshita, dakshita mentioned before uh, we have to actually reload the uh, reload our vs code instance so that the vs code just uh, can uh, successfully configure the extension well it's, so it's and it's a safer way so i'm going to actually open the command palette so how to open the command palette is uh, hitting control shift p uh, and for the mac users it's uh, it's uh, it is a uh, command shift p so i'm going to open my command palette and type reload X window so with that uh, we can see here if you don't if you didn't actually uh, notice uh, down here the language mode has been changed from xml to synapse xml language that means having this synapse xml uh, down here means uh, the extension has been successfully activated so uh, so if i just try to um, mess with uh, one of the configurations so then it will give these uh, errors right so that means our extension uh, successfully works so uh, since i uh, uh, talk about the activation points let me uh, let me talk about the activation points that we have given through our vs code and extension so basically for any XML document, we open in our VS code and for those that have a synapse, a synapse namespace, which is this one, uh, the extension will be activated. So that is one way. Another way is if you have opened any WSO2 ESP project in the workspace of, uh, in the workspace in VS code instance, then again, the the extension will be activated automatically other than that there is another command uh, where you can uh, use to forcefully uh, activate the activation for uh, activate our extension i'll show you in a bit uh, i'll show you that in a bit so with that uh, let me show you what are the commands uh, that we have enabled to this uh, extension so for that, I'm again uh, opening my command palette. And with uh, so after that, I'm just going to add my uh, WSO2. I'm just going to add the keyword WSO2 EI so that, uh, so that uh, when, uh, when I type the, this WSO2 EI keyword, it shows you all the available commands that we have enabled to this extension. So as I mentioned before, so these are the these are the uh, commands that we have in the extension so for example there is build project uh, create new api and activate wso2 ei tooling and much more so let me actually create let me just show you how to create a wso2 esp project uh, using our extension for that we have this create uh, esp project command I'm just going to hit enter and then it asks for a uh, ESP project name. So for this, I'm just going to add the uh, add, uh, hello world demo as the name. So after that, after entering the name, it asks you for a destination folder. So I'm going to use this folder I created and hit enter. 
so uh, you may notice that um, the uh, uh, if your project gets successfully created then it will be actually open in the new vs code instance so if i just head back to my previous vs code instance you can see a, a maven block uh, down at the uh, down in the output uh, channel so if get uh, so if it is not problem uh, if the project gets successfully created but if you um, if you uh, if the it's a w, uh, your project creation I was uh, if the project creation uh, something when uh, something goes wrong in your project creation uh, you can just check your uh, maven uh, maven log in here and check uh, what is the reason for that so for now i'm just going to just close this uh, instance because i'm no i no i'm no longer need this instance So this is my, uh, so as you can see here, this is my new project that I just created, Hello World Demo. So if I unfold it, uh, unfold these uh, folders, you can see the Synapse, uh, you can see this Synapse config folder and inside that, you can see this all the uh, API folders, uh, endpoints folder, local entries folder. And also you have this registered resources folder in here. So this is a new addition to our project structure. So uh, let me show you how to quickly uh, create an artifact using our uh, extension. So uh, now you can just, uh, so let me just show you how to create a proxy service. So I'm just go, uh, I'm just uh, right click on this proxy services folder and create uh, and this and I'm, not, I'm just going to uh, select this create new proxy option not this new file option because this comes from uh, vs code by default uh, you have to just select this new create proxy option so once you select that uh, you will be asked for a name for the proxy so i'm just going to uh, put uh, a name just a name sample proxy and just Hit enter. So with that, uh, you mean uh, you can see uh, the uh, the artifact, the proxy artifact gets successfully created and open in this tab. As uh, uh, with that, also you can see uh, <clears throat> this uh, file has a template based sample. So what? Uh, so this is uh, uh, this is a feature that we have enabled so that you can only have you should only have a minimal number of changes to get your artifact configuration done, right? So so this is the template that will come if you just uh, create a proxy service. So this is one way of creating artifact. The uh, so as I mentioned before our uh, all our capabilities, all our features are exposed via commands. So for that, to create artifacts also, we have a set of commands. So, so let me show you how to use that. Let me just uh, create an API or an, or an endpoint. Uh, so for that, I'm just going to open the command palette again and just in, enter endpoint. point here and so with that it uh, it will show you what are the uh, available uh, commands here i'm going to click this one and with that if you have any uh, if you are if if the artifact that you're going to create has uh, some uh, types then it will be listed down here so if you want to just create an end uh, address endpoint you can uh, select this type also, if it is a failover endpoint, you can just select whatever the uh, option available for that. So for this, I'm going to just create an uh, address endpoint and, we, uh, and then it asks for an artifact name. Again, I'm just entering a random name and it happened. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, everything, every artifact that is that is created using this extension will have this template-based sample in the big uh, at the in the beginning. 
So that's how you can actually uh, create an artifact uh, inside your uh, ESB WSO2 ESB project. So let me head back to again to the proxy uh, proxy artifact that we have created, and I'll show you how how the auto completion and uh, other features I mentioned before works. Right. So if I just go and add, uh, if I just go and uh, try to add some mediator. If you actually don't know what mediator to add, you can just hit uh, control and space and have auto completions from here. So I'm just going to use the uh, hit the hit control and space. Uh, with that, it will show you what are the available uh, mediators that you can use in here. Uh, for now, I'm just going to use the payload factory mediator in here. So uh, see, uh, with that uh, auto completion also, we give uh, a code a code snippet. So you so you can easily um, go with your editing, right? So um, even for the art, uh, even for uh, the attributes values also, you can have this uh, uh, auto completion stuff. Right. So if I just hit uh, control and space, it will show you what are the uh, available, what are the valid uh, attribute uh, at uh, uh, what are the uh, what are the available uh, values for this attribute. Uh, let me just uh, select the JSON type, and uh, in the format, if I just uh, go and hit an editing. Um, just can right. So that's how actually the auto completion works. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, let's see how uh, the code diagnostics works. So if I just remove this args from args element from here. Uh, the extension will say so that there is an error in your uh, configuration it will show uh, it, it will if you hover over it you can see uh, the diagnostic message so it says child elements are missing from element payload factory and the following elements are expected which is args so as you can see here it actually gives a meaningful diagnostic message for this error Right. So with that, you can actually um, follow the uh, instruction and add whatever the missing in here. So even if I uh, messed up with, uh, even if I mess with uh, some of the configuration, still it will show you uh, uh, the errors in here. Okay. Um, so that's how the code diagnostics work. So let me show you how go to definition feature works. Actually, as I mentioned before, the go to definition feature uh, in the context of WSO2 EI, uh, mm, we actually want this go to definition feature for elements like se uh, sequence and uh, endpoints. So let me just create a sequence uh, quickly. And so once you have this uh, sequence created, I'm just going to you. I'm just going to refer this sample sequence uh, from the sample proxy that I have created, right? So I'm just going to add this at the sequence from here, and for this uh, and for the key, I'm going to add this name from here. So if you just uh, click control, uh, so for the uh, control, and if you just, uh, no, sorry. Um, so in Mac users, you can actually uh, use command, and if you just, if you go and hover over the key value, it will show the definition. So that's how it, uh, the code definition works. For the Linux and Windows user, use, uh, users, it should be control and uh, Control and you can just house uh, mouse hover over that. And also, if you can, if you right click on this uh, value, uh, you can see this code definition option. From there also, you can just go to uh, to the definition uh, that that you just want. 
right? So that's how got definition works. So let me just uh, get rid of this artifact because I don't need that. So if I talk about the hover or uh, feature, if you just go and uh, hover over some of the elements, uh, you can see a, a small description comes up. So the, for, the for, so for, for the proxy, it says, uh, so this element is a synapse configuration. And if I just go and see about the payload factory, it says uh, replaces the existing message payload with a new SOAP or JSON payload. So actually with this, uh, with these kind of messages, you can actually uh, know, get to know, you can actually get to know about the synapse configurations while developing. So those are some of the features uh, that we have uh, inside our uh, EI uh, extension. So, uh, so then uh, I'll show you how to actually uh, create a deployable archive from a project that you have created. Uh, so once you have successfully uh, completed the configurations, you can actually uh, use this command, uh, build project command uh, to create the uh, car file. If I just hit enter, uh, actually, you would uh, you would get if the car is get uh, created successfully you would get you will get this message information information message saying uh, maven process successfully executed so if something goes wrong you can have uh, all the uh, errors uh, down here in the uh, output channel so once you have successfully executed that uh, you can just uh, go back to this target folder and uh, uh, find your car file. So this is the uh, deployable car file uh, for your project, right? So that's uh, so. Those are some of the few uh, some of the features actually we have enabled through our extension, so that the users actually. Um, have a nice and seamless experience uh, when using and when developing in, in uh, developing integration with WSO2 Enterprise Integrator. Uh, so other thing is the uh, other thing to mention is so let's say uh, let's see you want to actually create another artifact with the same name. So if I just go and create another proxy uh, uh, artifact with the same name that we have uh, that we have uh, created so which is uh, sample proxy so we'll give uh, so it will not be created because it uh, because there is another uh, duplicate file uh, inside this proxy services uh, folder so it give you uh, this error saying uh, uh, there was an error creating the synapse uh, sample proxy.xml artifact, right? So those are the uh, features uh, that we have in our extension. Uh, so to continue with the uh, webinar, I'll uh, I'll give you to Dashi here. Okay, thank you, Sajini. So we'll uh, I'll continue with the. Uh, the final uh, stages of the webinar. So uh, we have, if you think about the roadmap of the this VS Code extension, as such you mentioned, we have we have a bunch of uh, enhancement and the new capabilities introduced in this. And but again, still we are uh, improving the continuing the improvements of the developer experience in order to match the efficiency in your integration flow development. So uh, first step as a first step, we are planning to uh, support the giving the support for the debugging uh, source view using the VS Code extension. And after that, uh, if you have previously have any kind of experience with the WSK2 integration studio standalone version, we have the onboarding option, which includes the uh, integration templates, you can quickly start with the that templates without having from without creating integration flows from scratch so we'll plan to introduce that feature into the uh, vs code extension as well so probably sooner you can see you can get start with the templates 
and uh, do the development. Then as a major enhancement, we'll plan to uh, integrate this integration test framework, which you can create the integration test for the using the VS Code extension, as well as the integration studio will incorporate this feature with the upcoming release. Not only that, you can probably will give some more additional features with the upcoming releases. So still this VS Code extension is in uh, uh, beta kind of release, but it is not kind of a major release with that because we are trying out, we are giving the developers to option. Uh, they can kind of collaboratively engage with us with GitHub URL. So if you go to the github.com, wc 2 ei tooling VS Code, you can uh, you can contribute to us. You can send the PRs. If you have any uh, feature requests, you can do the feature request as well as you can submit any issues that you have encountered with your uh, while you are developing your uh, integration. So that's the final part of the uh, final webinar in this uh, integration studio webinar series. If you haven't uh, download the WSA2 uh, Enterprise Integrator Integration Studio, uh, you can go to the Integration Studio page and you can download the standalone version uh, on your whatever the uh, player, uh, favorite operating system. At the same time, if you don't want to move from the your existing editor, you can try out with the best popular VS Code editor and install our extension on top of that and try integration with that too. So if you have any question, now it's the time to answer your questions. Let's see. Okay, uh, we have a couple of questions. Uh, we'll try to answer some of the questions that you have. Uh, okay, first question we have is uh, how this uh, VS Code extension um, does the Synapse-based validation? Yes, so basically with this uh, VS Code new extension, WSO2 Enterprise Integration Tooling extension, what we actually did was we created the language server behind the scene. So basically, when you install the integration uh, studio integration, sorry, integration uh, enterprise integrated tooling extension to the VS Code, it connect to the language server and do the validation based on that. So at the same time, so this uh, this do the multiple kind of integration. If, even if you want to uh, implement this with another editor, which support for the language server you can create your own extension as well. Probably depending on the demand, we'll plan to uh, give some more supportive editors in near future. Right now, we are giving these two options. So the uh, next question we are having is, uh, is there any graphical view editor with the VS Code? uh so to answer that uh, right now uh, we don't have any plan on uh, creating a, a graphical view near future because we as i as i mentioned in the uh, roadmap uh, we have kind of a couple of pre-planned uh, features that we are going to uh, release soon with this upcoming releases so probably we want uh, more focus on the graphical view part of that. If you are more interested on graphical coding or if, if you want to have a sleek experience with the drag and drop options, you can try out our latest integration studio uh, from our website and do the graphical kind of uh, implementation with the uh, integration flows. Uh, we have another question. Uh, let me. Okay, so they ask uh, Enterprise Integrator will change core from Java to Balrinarlang. 
mention WS2 API mention. Okay, so basically it's asking whether we have, uh, we have, we are, are we going to change the enterprise integrator core, which, which in the Java to the Ballerina plan. So uh, the plan of that is up with the upcoming enterprise integrator 7.0 release. Uh, we will release three major components like uh, with the micro integrator and the streaming integrator, same time the Ballerina integrator. So we are not going to uh, rewrite the entire uh, synapse based part from the Ballerina lang at the first phase, but uh, as an umbrella uh, product, so it has the ES7 will incorporate all the three pillars. So basically Ballerina uh, integrator will come with the upcoming release as well. So that is the plan on this uh, Java to Ballerina lang. So there's a, another uh, question that they are asking. Uh, uh, they are using Eclipse as their tooling uh, for the development proxy. This WS team going to add these features into Eclipse extension as well. So, uh, so the right now the plan is we don't have any plan of releasing uh, Eclipse extensions uh, hereafter because. We have done major improvements, like uh, uh, we have actually huge improvement with RCP-based uh, standalone application integration studio. So we are no longer uh, continuing the previous way of installing features from the P2, and you can try out with the whatever the Eclipse version that you are having. Because uh, if you try out the integration studio, it includes the all the micro integrator inside, and you didn't want to configure any Java there. And the graphical experience is very uh, sleek and nice. You can try out and see how we improve the uh, developer experience on the new integration studio. But we won't uh, release any further uh, Eclipse extension uh, improvements hereafter because since we have this standalone version we won't do any kind of improvements to the previous one so there's another question that they're asking uh, is this vs code is it compatible with the proxies that develop with the eclipse tooling so yes this will uh, this will basically support for the whatever the artifacts that you develop with the uh, Eclipse based or the integration studio based tooling, but there may be uh, certain uh, problems with the entire kind of scenario. Example, if you're having registries or data mapper scenarios, we won't kind of uh, give the graphical kind of view or we won't support to open that kind of features in the VS Code extension right now. But uh, probably in near future, we'll try to uh, implement those features as well. Uh, right now, you can open the basics, uh, basic project with the VS Code extension, but not the registry kind of option. Okay, if we have any more questions, we can answer. I think uh, if we don't have more questions, uh, yeah. So I think we have answers to all the questions. So as we mentioned before, this is the last webinar of the Integration Studio webinar series. So we have uh, different areas. We explain our, our uh, WS2 integration team developers. We continue with the uh, various topics. We covered uh, how you can integrate with the Docker and the uh, cloud scenarios, how you can do the uh, tips for the developers, how you can enhance the and uh, improve your integration flows. Now, the finally, we are explaining the extension that we are supporting from the VS Code. So just try out the latest integration studio and the VS Code and do the uh, try to enhance your developer experience using those two options. Thank you very much for the joining for the webinar.